Hello everyone, welcome to another First Page Friday. Um, if this is your first time, this is a time where I just read uh, the first page of a different book. And if you like it, the link will be in the description that you can uh, check it out from our uh, library. And I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Miss Nicole, or Nicole, whichever you prefer to call me, and I'm the Young Adult and Outreach Services Librarian at Indian Valley Public Library. So um, if you are ready, we can do that. So normally I start off by reading um, a the description, so the little blurb that they have, and then we go to the first page of the book. If the um, paragraph continues onto the second page, don't worry, I won't just cut off mid-sentence. I will go and finish the paragraph onto the next page. We're going to start off with this book, Lockwood & Co. It's a series by uh, Jonathan Shroud. The first book in the series is called The Screaming Staircase. So right now, um, it may, it'll be October, so it is time for something a little creepy. Um, but for me, I would read this all year round. So if you happen to be watching this video and it's not October, um, hopefully you'll still be interested in checking this book out. So let's get started. A sinister problem has occurred in London. All nature of ghosts are appearing throughout the city, and they aren't exactly friendly. Only young people have the psychic ability to require uh, required to see and eradicate these foes. In the screaming staircase, the plucky and talented Lucy Carlyle teams up with Anthony Lockwood and the charismatic leader of Lockwood & Co., a psychic detection agency that handles the dangerous work. After an assignment leads to both a grisly discovery and a disastrous end, Lucy, Anthony, and their sarcastic colleague, George, are forced to take part of the perilous investigation of the most haunted houses in England. With Lockwood & Co., uh, uh, survive the hall's legendary screaming staircase in the red room to see another day. Not one of the ghosts. Of the first few hauntings I investigated with Lockwood and Co., I, I intended to say little, in part to protect the identity of the victims, in part because of the gruesome nature of the incidents, but mainly because, in a variety of ingenious ways, we succeeded in messing them all up. There, I've admitted it, that a single one of those early cases ended as neatly as we have wished. Yes, the more, uh, horror has driven out, but only as far as Richmond Park, where even now it stalks by day night among the silent trees. Yes, both the gray specter of Aldgate and the entity of known as the Clattering Bones were destroyed, but not uh, before several further and now, I think, unnecessary deaths. And as for the creeping shadow that haunted the young Mrs. Andrews to the imperilment of her sanity and her hemline, where she may continue to wander in this world, poor thing, there it follows too. So it's not exactly an unblemished record that, took, that we took with us. Lockwood and I, when we walked up the path to 62 Sheen Road on a misty autumn afternoon and briskly rang the bell. Okay, so that was the first page of The Screaming Staircase, which is the first book in the Lockwood & Co. or Lockwood & Company um, series by Jonathan Shroud. Uh, the next one, which I believe also takes place in England, it should, is um, a, a book called Stalking the, uh, Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. I, I, one day I'm going to actually remember how uh, to like look up people's last names. So I apologize if you see this, uh, Carrie, at some point and you can yell at me um, for <laughs> mispronouncing your name. Um, so this one, again, is a first in this series, and this is of James Patterson Presents one. So this is him highlighting some other authors that he thinks um, is awesome. So let me read the description of this. Groomed to be the perfect high-born Victorian young lady, Audrey Rose Wadsworth has a decidedly different plan for herself. After the loss of her beloved mother, she is determined to understand the nature of death and its workings. Trading in her embroidery needle for an autopsy scalpel, Audrey secretly apprentices in forensics. She soon gets drawn into the investigation of the serial killer, Jack the Ripper. But to her horror, the search for clues brings her far closer uh, to her sheltered world than she ever thought possible. Inspired by the infamously unsolved um, case, this dazzling debut by Carrie weaves an, an atmospheric tale of beauty and darkness in the remark which, a, which a remarkably modern Victorian girl discovers that some buried secrets simply won't stay dead. One, 
Preliminary Excision, Dr. Jonathan Wadsworth Laboratory, Highgate, 30th of August, 1888. I placed my thumb and forefinger on the icy flesh, spreading it taut above the breastbone as uncle had shown me. Getting the preliminary incision correct was impressive. I took my time eyeing the placement of metals upon skin, ensuring proper angling for the cut, cleanest cut. I felt uncle hovering behind me, studying my every move, but my head, but had my view set entirely on the blade in my hand. Without hesitation, I dragged the scalpel from one shoulder to the sternum, taking pains to push as deeply as I could. My brows raised as a fraction before I schooled my face into an unreadable mask. Human flesh flayed much easier than I anticipated. It wasn't much different from cutting into a pork loin prior to roasting it. I thought that should have been more disturbing than it was. A sickeningly sweet smell wafted from the decision I made. This cadaver wasn't fresh as others. I had a sneaking suspicion that all of our subjects were attained through proper legal or voluntary measures and was regretting waving away Uncle's earlier offer of a breathing apparatus. So that's the first page of Stalking the Jack the Ripper. The next and final one that we'll be talking about today is A Hold Back the Tide by Mel Melinda Salisbury. Everyone in the quiet lakeside community knows that Alva's father killed her mother all those years ago. There wasn't enough proof to arrest him, though, and there was no, with no other family, Alva's been forced to live with her mother's murderer, doing her best to survive until you can earn enough money to, to run away. One of her chores is to monitor water levels in the lock a task her father takes very seriously. Their family has been the guardian of the lock for generations. It's a cold, lonely task, and a few times, Ava swears she can feel something watching her. But the more Ava uh, investigates, the more she realizes that the truth can be more monstrous than lies, and that you can never escape your press. From the internationally best-selling author Melinda Salisbury comes a thriller that embodies the romance and mystery of the Scottish Highlands and will keep you guessing at every turn. One, here are the rules for living with a murderer. One, do not draw attention to yourself. It's pretty self-explanatory. If you don't, they don't notice you, they won't get any ideas about killing you. Be a ghost in your own home if that's what it takes. After all, you can't kill a ghost. Of course, when you live with a murderer, sit opposite of them every meal, share a washroom and a kitchen, and sleep a mere 12 feet and two flimsy walls away from them. This is impossible. Even if the sublet of specters is bound to notice, which leads to the next rule. Two. If you can't be invisible, be useful. Cook huge, hearty meals that make you them too full and too sleepy to feel like slaughtering you. I'm talking about meaty stews, thick casseroles, heaps of potatoes. No one ever ate three pounds of mashed potatoes and then went on a killing spree. Serving a bit of bread and hard cheese is not going to keep you alive. Okay, and that is the first page of Hold Back the Tide. Um, this one is a standalone, so while the other ones I talked about are the beginning of series, if you're just looking for a one and done, you can uh, check this one out. So once again, let's go through the books that we talked about today. Um, we have had a selection from The Screaming Staircase, which is the first book in the Lockwood & Coast um, series by Jonathan Shroud. Then we read a selection from a Stalking Jack the Ripper, which again is the first book in um, the series. And then this is a standalone uh, called Hold Back the Tide by Melinda Salisbury. So if you're interested in any of these titles, uh, click on the link and you can place a hold on it uh, at Indian Valley Public Library. Thanks for spending some time with me. Bye.